Well, morning. Uh, welcome to you to our, our Sunday morning service here in uh, Bethel Baptist Lai, though obviously we're not there. But um, you're welcome all the same whether you're watching this with us on, on Sunday morning or you're catching up later on in the week. Uh, we'll give you a, a warm welcome and pray that you'll be um, blessed as we uh, spend some time looking into God's Word together. Just so you know what's going to happen, uh, I'm going to uh, read from the Bible, from the book of Colossians, uh, then I'm going to do a short prayer, and then we're going to, um, it's called a sermon, but it's going to be me talking for a bit. So let's read from Colossians. So Colossians chapter 4, I'm going to be reading a couple of verses from uh, verse 7 uh, to the end of verse 9 from Colossians chapter 4. So uh, Paul has written this book to the church in Colossae and uh, chapter 4 is the last chapter and uh, in the Bible I'm reading from um, this particular section, or at least the beginning of this section, is called Final Greetings. So Colossians chapter 4, starting to read from verse 7. Titicus will tell you all about my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage your hearts. And with him Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you, they will tell you of everything that has taken place. Amen. Let's pray. <clears throat> our Heavenly Father, we we thank you for your goodness to us. We thank you that even though we are um, in our own homes or, or not able to physically join together at church, we thank you that we have the ability and the, uh, the capability to, to still meet and to worship you together. So Father, as we've read from your word from the Bible and as we'll look at it in a few minutes, we pray through your Holy Spirit that you will open eyes and open hearts. Uh, to learn something of you this morning. Lord, that even though we are separate, may we know that we've met with you, the living God. And Lord, as we come to you, we, we to commit our country to you. Uh, we're aware of all the, the hurt and the fear um, that's going on at the moment with the, all the, the isolation. And we pray for those, Father, who are, who are on the front line, those who are serving us in, in health care and, and in policing and in government and in all those uh, uh, first line people, that you will be with them. We pray for your protection upon them. Lord, pray for your blessing upon them too. And Lord, we pray that as our, our nation faces this time, that uh, we will return once more to you, that we will cry out to you, Lord, that we will pray to you, that once more we will turn away from the path that we were taking as a country and, and back towards you, we ask. And Lord, we pray too for, for those in authority over us, Lord. We, we read in the Bible that we are to pray for them. So we, we commit the Prime Minister to you and the Cabinet and all the members of Parliament, Lord. We, we pray for all the MPs, Lord, regardless of which party they're of. But Lord, we pray that you will help them as they seek to, uh, to lead and to, to rule wisely. Um, so Lord, we just pray that you will... Uh, be with us at this time. Be with, with those who are suffering. Lord, those who perhaps are in physical um, agony. Perhaps those who are suffering mentally. Maybe emotionally. Maybe spiritually. We pray that you will be to each of them exactly what they need at this time. And so, Father, we thank you that the, you are the God who hears our prayers. You are the God who answers our prayers. And so, Lord, we cry out to you. Lord, we worship you. Pray that your name will be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. <clears throat> so uh, this morning uh, I want to continue our, our look into the, uh, the book of Ephesians. Um, as, a, as a church now in uh, Bethel Baptist in Thlai, we've been on uh, Ephesians for just over two years, give or take. And we're coming to the end. And uh, this morning... Um, I did wonder about actually finishing Ephesians, um, we're in chapter 6, uh, we've got four verses left, but as I was looking and studying and preparing over the week I've decided, I'm afraid, to split it 
and we're going to be looking at verses to, uh, really 21 and, and 22 this morning and then next week, God willing, we'll be looking at the, the last few verses of uh, Ephesians 6. So let me just read them to you, shall we, uh, just in case you're unfamiliar. So I'm just going to read uh, the last, uh, probably the, from, um, yeah, the last few verses of, of Ephesians chapter 6. Halfway through, I'll start halfway through verse 18. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints, and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel, for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak so that you also may know how and what I am doing. Titicus, the beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Peace be to the brothers and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to all who love our Lord Jesus Christ with love incorruptible. <clears throat> so as I said, we're coming to the, the end of our, our studies, if you like, uh, this series in Ephesians. And whether it's through this series or perhaps through your, your wider biblical knowledge, then you're probably aware of this man, Paul, this great apostle. What a, an amazing man of God he was and how he was uh, uh, commissioned by the Lord Jesus himself to take this good news, to take the gospel to the Gentiles. Um, as I was looking through, uh, studying for this during the week, um, sometimes it's good to Google, sometimes, sorry, other search engines are available, uh, to search the internet. And uh, when I put Paul in, this is one of the phrases that actually stuck with me. It said of him, he was one of the leaders of the first generation of Christians, often considered to be the most important person after Jesus in the history of, history of Christianity. Wow, fancy having that, um, I say having that on your gravestone, to be so thought of. To be such a, a leader, such a somebody who strove to, to share the good news across the world, or at least in his known world with the Gentiles. But as we were, as I was thinking about Paul, particularly and, and particularly at the, now at the end of Ephesians, this, this thought struck me. Paul wasn't alone. Oh, we, we know that we're never alone as Christians, the Lord Jesus is with us, and absolutely, and his, his Holy Spirit indwells us, but... Paul was never alone, or at least very rarely was he alone. Just think about that for a minute. This, this great, this, this fearless missionary, he had help. He had help. He had, he had men and women, actually, who, who helped him, worked with him, travelled with him. Paul was never foolish enough to think that he didn't desperately need the family of God. In fact, when he, he writes his uh, second letter to, to Timothy, it's probably one of the, the last things that he writes in his life just before being martyred in Rome. He begs Timothy in, in chapter 4 to, to come quickly to him because he's suffering in, in actual, well, at least relative spiritual solitude. He says almost everyone else has gone except for Luke. Only Luke is left. And Paul desires Christian ministry, Christian fellowship, actually more than he desires to be free from his chains. And so in these verses that we've just read, he's talking about this man Titicus and elsewhere about others. He has such real, such sincere love for them and in his commendation of them for their faithful service. He describes Titicus as a beloved brother and the faithful minister in the Lord. Can you almost sense it? Can you, can you feel Paul's concern, if you like, for these local churches that he's, he's helped establish and that he's now writing to? 
you know, he, he visits whenever he can and he, he writes them lots of letters and he, and he sends actually his own companions to them. And see here in these couple of verses from Ephesians 6, his sincere love. Let me read it again. So that you may know how I am and what I am doing, Titicus, beloved brother and faithful minister in the Lord, will tell you everything. I've sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. It's there, isn't it? This, even though Paul is this, this great preacher, this great orator, this great theologian, He's a pastor. He has a pastor's heart as he, he concerned and he loves Christ's church. Up to this point, in, at least in this book in, in Ephesians, it's not, been, it's not been, been particularly personal. He hasn't particularly written to, to individuals to correct them or to encourage them. Perhaps this is because Paul had intended this, this book to be shared, this letter to be shared among several churches in, in Asia Minor. But now as he comes to the end, this brief, brief conclusion oozes with evident care for these Christians. And it's, it's all the more pronounced actually when you stop and you think about Paul's circumstances. Paul was in prison. He's in prison in Rome. He's chained to a guard. He's getting on in years and his health probably wasn't great. From Philippians, uh, which he wrote during the same time in prison, we learn that actually there were other Christians in Rome who were giving him a hard time. They were, they were attacking Paul. And we would understand, wouldn't we, that if Paul had sent out an appeal for prayer, actually for his own needs. We often read that, don't we? We often see people who, who will ask for a specific prayer because of the situation they find themselves in. But actually, and one of the reasons I, I, I read the first couple of verses again from, from that short passage, was that Paul doesn't do that. There's not, there's not really a, a hint about the difficulties that he's facing. In verses 19 and 20, Paul's only prayer is about being released from prison. No, it's nothing of the sort, is it? It's that, it's that he would be bold in proclaiming the gospel. That puts a different perspective on things, doesn't it? Not that, not that he'd be released, not that he'll have a great time, but that he will be bold in preaching the gospel where God had put him. And when it comes to, to saying farewell, Paul's focus is, is his concern for these Christians that he's writing to and for their needs. And Paul, Paul knew that they had concerns for him and about him, about his imprisonment. You can read it about in, earlier on in Ephesians uh, 3.13 where he says, I, I know you're going to be upset because of my situation being in prison, but don't worry. And so what does he do? He sends Titicus to them. He sends Titicus to, to tell them all about what's going on, to, to give them an update on the situation. Don't forget, there's no, there's no Facebook, there's no Zoom to, to have live updates. So he sends Titicus to comfort their hearts. Paul we know. We know a lot about Paul. But who is this Titicus that he, he mentions? Well, we first hear about him right back in the book of Acts, in Acts chapter 20, verse 4, when uh, during Paul's third missionary journey, he's mentioned as one of Paul's, oh, I was going to say helpers, maybe assistants, maybe companions would be a better word, um, when Paul was going from Corinth to Jerusalem. And they were there to deliver a, a financial gift to the church, because the church in Jerusalem was struggling. And so as Paul and his companions were, were doing their missionary trip through the Gentiles, they were given money to, to take back to Jerusalem to, to show their love and their support for the Christians there. We learn that, that Titicus was a, a native of Asia, or I suppose what we call Asia Minor today, that, that bit around Turkey. In, in travelling to Colossae, we read that Titicus was accompanied by Onesimus. You know, there's a there's a book where Onesimus is mentioned. He's a runaway slave who, who turns up in Paul's uh, sphere of influence, Paul's presence. 
and Onesimus is converted, becomes a Christian. And he spends some time with Paul and then eventually Paul says, it's time to go back to Philemon, your, your earthly master. And so Titicus goes with him and takes him back. Probably no doubt Titicus is there to, to help Philemon perhaps understand, maybe to, to emphasise the need for, for good grace in Paul's absence on receiving Onesimus back. You read about it in Philemon 1.17. Paul intended to, to send this man, Titicus, or another man to Crete in order to give uh, Titus a chance to visit Paul. And later, Titicus is with Paul in Rome during his second imprisonment. And Paul sends him, as we read, to Ephesus in order to free up Timothy for a visit. And in both um, Crete and Ephesus, it's almost as if Titus has become, uh, sorry, Titicus has, has become a a stand in, a, an interim pastor while the pastors there go to visit Paul, he steps in and, and picks up the reins. There's a, an unnamed believer, if you like, I'll, I'll use that term in, in 2 Corinthians 8, 22, that, that Paul talks about. And he describes them like this. A brother whom we have often tested and found earnest in many matters, but who is now more earnest than ever because of his great confidence in you. Now, many commentators surmise that perhaps this is a reference to Titicus. I, I'm not sure. But, you know what, the, the description would seem to fit this man. And though we may not know much about him, really, what we do know is praiseworthy and, and actually really impressive. We read in Ephesians 6, verse 21, that, that Titicus was a, a beloved brother. Oh, Paul pays such great confidence in this man. He sent him to achieve important works, like, you know, taking the, the finances to Jerusalem. And I read earlier from the book of Colossians that Paul also wrote in that, um, verses 7 and 8, where he, he speaks in the same manner, the same way of Titicus. So we, Titicus will send you all, tell you all about my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are, and that he may encourage you in your heart. They're almost identical. Probably Paul maybe have written them very closely to each other, and then sent the letters off. But you notice that in both, how Paul describes Titicus as a, a beloved brother. Oh, he could have just said, my brother Titicus, and left it at that, but, but no, he adds this word, beloved. It shows that, that Titicus was a, a warm man, one who, who wasn't cold and aloof. He wasn't brusque or, or insensitive. He wasn't, he wasn't grumpy and, and difficult to get on and be around. He was beloved. And when Paul uses that word to describe Titicus, then I would imagine that everyone who knew him would have, yeah, would have nodded and said, yeah, that's, that's Titicus. We, we know him. We know what he's like. Oh, he's a, he's a dear Christian. He's a, he's a lovely man. He's a loving man. Oh, we, we love him so much ourselves. Paul, we know where you're coming from about Titicus. How would people describe you? Would they describe you as a, a beloved brother or a beloved sister? Well, if you say, well, do you know what? In the church I go to, not very many people probably even know me then I would suggest perhaps it, it says more about you than it does about the church. Are you outgoing and friendly? Do you, do you go out of your way to, to meet new people and to, to make them feel welcome? Do you take a, a genuine interest in others? Well, Titicus was that kind of man. The one who, who if you like, went the extra mile. And that's why Paul calls him a beloved brother. Oh yeah, everyone would have would have nodded in agreement to that. But Paul goes on, he calls him a, a faithful minister in the Lord. And it's the same, he uses the same phrase in Colossians 4 verse 7. It means that he's, he's trustworthy. You know, he kept his word. He did what he was assigned with integrity. Paul, Paul could entrust him with, with weighty matters, with big responsibilities for the, for the churches. He did, didn't he, with Crete or in Ephesus. 
And he knows, Paul just knows that if he gives Tidicus a job, then Tidicus will do it to the, the best of his ability. Oh, he could be trusted. He was trusted with actually delivering these letters that Paul was writing in prison to, to the churches in Ephesus and, and Colossae and, and Philemon. That was his job. Just think about that for a minute. He wasn't to know that they would become part of the Bible. He wouldn't have known then just how important they were and are still to us today. But because he was faithful, he carried out his duties and we have these books for us today. Faithfulness is a fruit of the Holy Spirit, isn't it? That should mark every believer. But it seems just, oh, too often, it seems to be missing among Christians. It means that if you, if you take on a, a responsibility, you know, the, the, the leader doesn't have to keep checking up on you, chasing you to make sure you've done it. They can trust you just to get on and do what you need to do. Yeah. You just do what you do to the glory of God and then report back that it's done. Faithfulness is, is a crucial part of caring relationships, isn't it? Because it means that you'll do what you say you're going to do when you're going to do it. People can count on you. So important. As we read the Bible, as we read the book of Ephesians, we realise that every, every Christian is a minister or a, a servant of Christ. Some, oh yeah, some are supported to do it full time. Maybe some like Paul are, are self-supporting. But whether, whether he worked or was supported by the churches, Titicus was a, was a faithful servant in the Lord. Paul almost goes a, a step further in Colossians where he describes him as a, a fellow bond slave. See, Titicus realised that he didn't belong to himself. Jesus Christ had purchased him with his own blood. And so Titicus lived to serve Christ. On that day when, when the Lord Jesus will return triumphantly, the words that you want to hear from him, in effect, are, are recorded in Matthew, 5, uh, Matthew 25, verse 21. And they're these, it's, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few... I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. Surely as Christians, that's what we want to hear. We want the Lord Jesus to say, well done. Well, to hear those words then, you must be faithfully serving the Lord Jesus now, I would suggest. Are you? Am I? Do we faithfully serve the Lord Jesus every day? Do you, do you live to do his will? Do you look after the needs in his church and get busy doing what needs to be done to meet those needs? I was going to say there are two types of people, there may be more, but there, there are two types of people who, who walk into the door of church if they're Christians. One type will walk in and go, well here I am, what are you going to do for me? These people often leave quite quickly because they're disappointed. Because the church, as far as they're concerned, just hasn't met their need. The other, the other side, the other group, well, they walk into church and they look around and they ask a very different question. They go, where are the needs that I can help fulfil? These are the Lord's servants. They're not here to be served but they're to serve Christ by serving his church. They care about others. So we need to be encouraging one another. We need to be an, an encouraging brother or sister. In Ephesians 6.22, Paul says that he's sending Titicus so that he may encourage your hearts. In Colossians 4, he says also the same thing encourage your hearts it's the the greek word parakalilo which means to to come alongside to to help 
and we've already read, we already saw that, that Paul knew that the Ephesians were, were prone to, to losing heart over the difficulties that Paul was facing in prison. Remember Ephesians 3.13? Just think about it. If, if Tychicus had a, a resting grumpy face, you know, he would have been perhaps seen as a bit gloomy, a bit negative maybe. He maybe would have told the Ephesians just how, how awful Paul's uh, conditions were. What circumstances that Paul was having to, oh, to battle through. But he wasn't that sort of man. Not from reading the Bible, he wasn't that sort of man. Paul knew that, that Tychicus would convey to the church Paul's spirit of trust in the Lord. Even in the middle of his difficulties. And this... This report, this maybe, maybe I won't use the word cheerful, but this, this positive report from Titicus would, oh, would just cheer their hearts. It would encourage them. What a ministry there is for, for a person who learns to be an encourager. Oh, this doesn't mean that you have to put on rose-tinted glasses and, and deny any real problems. No, nor does it mean that you don't have to acknowledge and, and confront wrongs. Rather, it means that you get to people to see things from God's perspective. And I suggest that will always bring hope and encouragement. No doubt Turkus would have conveyed Paul's perspective to the Ephesians and to others. In, in Ephesians 1, it gives a, uh, an outline of some of the things that Paul was going through. And as you read it, you could imagine, you can either read it really gloomily and see that he's in prison and, oh, it's terrible. And maybe you, you look at the cup, the, the cup half empty. But I don't think that's the way Tidicus would have said it. Not as an encourager. Not to encourage the, the hearts of the churches that he was visiting. He may have said something like, oh, do you know what? Yeah, Paul's in prison. And, yeah, we know he's in prison. And, and do you know what? We're right. You're right, he's not in five-star accommodation. Okay, we understand that. But you know what? Every time the guard is changed, Paul has the opportunity to, to witness to them. It's fantastic. And you know what? Now there are, there are Christians all throughout the Praetorian Guard, the Caesar's special guard. Not only that, there are now Christians in Caesar's household. Do you see the difference? How one you can read, oh, he's in prison, but the other one you see it from God's perspective that people are being saved and there are Christians and, and God is being glorified and God's being worshipped in the most difficult of situations. That's God's perspective on things. And I suggest that perspective, that does bring hope and that does bring encouragement. So let's learn, I was going to say from these minor characters, I think that's unfair, like Titicus. He's only mentioned five times in the Bible. But what a witness that he had. How he was used by God to, to take the good news, to share the gospel, to be an encourager, to be trustworthy. How we can learn from him to encourage one another, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let's be Titicus, shall we, in the places where God has put us. Amen. Let me pray. Father, we, we thank you for this man and for others like him, Lord. Um, they're mentioned rarely in the Bible, not many times. Some aren't even mentioned by name at all, but we thank you for their love for you, that you were able to use them. Thank you for the gifts that you gave them. Thank you for Titicus, that he was such a faithful, a beloved brother, a faithful minister, that he was an encourager, that he was trustworthy, that he was faithful. Lord, we pray that that will be true of us, that we will learn to, to wholly trust in you, that everything we do will be to your glory, wherever you put us, Lord, whatever happens to us. So, Father, we just pray that through your spirit, you will, you will teach us, to be more like the Lord Jesus, as Titicus was more like the Lord Jesus. For his sake we pray. 
Amen. We thank you for spending this time with us. Um, pray that you've been enjoying uh, the services. Maybe enjoy may not be the right word, but maybe finding them encouraging, maybe challenging. If that's the case, we'd love to hear from you. Um, so you can either drop a, a comment underneath, um, subscribe somewhere here if you want to. Um, if you want to perhaps write in a bit more detail, you can go to our website, BethelBaptistLive.co.uk and in the contacts page, there is a, a form where you can fill in and uh, you can ask a question, you want to find out more. We'd love to hear from you. Um, but we pray that the Lord Jesus will bless you and God will be with you in this coming week. See you next time.